Hi, welcome back to my channel, Maths with Armin. This is another video on probability. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at mutually exclusive event. Please, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, Maths with Armin, please subscribe. I hope you will enjoy this video. In this video, we're going to look at the concept of mutually exclusive events, and we're going to do a number of examples of mutually exclusive events and determining the probability of mutually exclusive events. As usual with all my videos, there will be an exercise worksheet at the end. Now let's just look at the concept of mutually exclusive events. Mutually exclusive events are events that do not have any outcomes in common. Right? Let's look at the following. If you look at that, you see there's event A and event B, and they overlap, so they do have something in common. So when we say they're mutually exclusive, that is what they have. They should have nothing in common. Well, let's see what we mean by mutually exclusive events. Let's consider two events, A and B. Now, if I look at A and B here, you can see the A and the B overlap. So if they're mutually exclusive, then they should not overlap. Otherwise, they cannot occur at the same time. So we should have a situation like that. So if they don't occur at the same time, then they're mutually exclusive. If they're mutually exclusive, then we can also understand it. They cannot occur at the same time. Or they do not have any elements in common. For example, you could have even and odd. They, you can't be even as well as odd. So even and odd are mutually exclusive there. So if A and B is empty, in other words, the intersection of A and B is empty, the probability of A and B is equal to zero. So the probability of mutually exclusive events will be equal to zero. In addition here, we could also write down probability of A intersection B is zero. We also have that if I want to find the size of A or B, in other words, how many elements are in A or B, then it's the number of elements of A plus the number of elements of B. Similarly, if I use the addition rule, the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of the intersection. But if they mutually exclusive, the intersection, as we can see, there should be the probability of the intersection is zero. So that will fall away. So the probability of A or B, if I have mutually exclusive events, are the probability of A plus the probability of B, which I can also write as the probability of A union B is the probability of A plus the probability of B. Now, let's look at the union of mutually exclusive events. In other words, we want to look at the addition rule here. So, that is the addition rule. Probability of A or B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus the probability of the intersection. But because they're mutually exclusive, the probability of A and B is zero. So, that is a zero. So, in other words, the addition rule is now modified and the addition rule is probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B. Now let's look at an example of mutually exclusive events. Let's consider the flipping a single pair coin. So if we flip a coin, it can either land heads or tails. So it can either be heads or it can be tails. So the sample space here consists of heads and tails. And let's consider the event A getting a head, that is a head, and event B getting a tail. So the probability of getting a head we can see is 0, 0,5, and the probability of getting a tail is also 0, 0,5. But the probability of getting a head and a tail, that's impossible. You cannot get a head and a tail. So the probability of a head and a tail is zero. Okay, so A and B, because of pro the pro 
probability of a head and a tail is zero. A and B are referred to as mutually exclusive events. We want to look at another example here. Let's consider tossing a fair six-sided die. Event A, obtaining an even number. Event B, obtaining an odd prime number. And then we want to calculate the probability of A and B, as well as the probability of A or B. Let's consider the sample space. Sample space there consists of the 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6. Event A, getting an even number. What are the even numbers? 2, 4, and 6. So the probability of getting an even number would be 3 over 6, or a half. Event B, getting an odd prime number. Which are the odd prime numbers? 3 as well as 5. So the probability of getting an odd prime number Probability of B is 2 over 6, which is 1 over 3. Now, if you look at those two sets, event A and event B, they have nothing in common. So the intersection is empty. Let's represent this in a Venn diagram. So this is what we have. Event A and event B have nothing in common. So if I look at event A, it's a 2, a 4, and a 6. Event B is obtaining a 3 and a 5. And because our sample space consisted of 6, we'll have the 1 there, which does not form part of A nor part of B. So A and B, because the intersection is empty, we say these two sets are, that's correct, mutually exclusive. And because they're mutually exclusive, the probability of A and B would be 0. Let's determine the probability of A or B. Here we use the modified addition rule. Probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B. And if we substitute those two probabilities, it's going to be 3 over 6 plus 2 over 6, which gives me 5 over 6. Now let's consider an example of applying the sum rule. So we're going to look at the uh, case where two six-sided dice are tossed. Event A would be a sum greater than 9. Event B would be getting at least 1, 2. So let's get our sample space. There's our sample space. Consists of 6 times 6, which is 36. So let's look at the case where we have probability of a sum greater than 9. Where do we see a sum greater than 9? Let's look. That's where we get the sum greater than 9. So the probability there would be 6 over 36. Let's look at the other one. We want at least 1, 2. Let's see where do we have at least 1, 2. That's where we have at least 1, 2. And if we count that, the probability there would be 11 over 36. But if we look at those two events, we see those two events are mutually exclusive. So the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B. What is the probability of A? Let's do the substitution. Probability of A is 6 over 36. So substitute the 6 over 36. Probability of B is 11 over 36. So we substitute 11 over 36. If we do that calculation, we get 17 over 36. Let's just consider an example of a union of mutually exclusive events. So given two mutually exclusive events, A and B, where it is given that the probability of A is 0, 0,5 and the probability of B is 0, 0,3. And we have to calculate the probability of A or B. So let's start off first. We want the probability of A or B. So let's use the addition rule. Probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B subtracted from it, probability of A and B. Let's see what is given. Probability of A, you can see there is 0, 0,5. So let's substitute the 0, 0,5 in the formula. Probability of B, you can see is 0, 0,3. So let's substitute that. There I get 0, 0,3. And probability of, of A and B. 
Uh, if events are mutually exclusive, we know the probability of A and B should be 0. In other words, we now substitute a 0 in there. And this gives me probability of A or B is 0, 0,5 plus 0, 0,3, which is 0, 0,8. Now let's look at another example where we're going to apply the concepts of mutually exclusive events. Here we have two events A and B, and it's given that the probability of A is 0, 0,6, probability of the second event is 0, 0,3, and probability of A or B is 0, 0,8. Are the events mutually exclusive? Okay. So we have to show, if we want to show they're mutually exclusive, we have to show that probability of A and B would be zero. So let's use our addition rule. There's our addition rule there. Probability of A or B is probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B, or the probability of the intersection. We are given the probability of, uh, the, let's put that there, so we are given the probability of A or B. See, that is 0, 0,8. See, there's a 0, 0,8, and we can insert it there. Probability of A is given. That's 0, 0,6, and we can substitute there. Probability of B is 0, 0,3, and we can substitute it there. And so the only one that's missing is probability of A and B. Doing a little bit of manipulation, we transpose the probability of A and B on the left side. And then we have 0, 0,6 plus 0, 0,3 minus 0, 0,8. I do a little bit of arithmetic there. That gives me 0, 0,1. And we know 0, 0,1 is definitely not 0. So therefore, we can deduce. You see, 0, 0,1 is not a 0. So the probability of A and B is not a 0. And because of that, we did not get the zero. We can then deduce that A and B are not mutually exclusive events. Now, let's look at the exercise worksheet. In question one here, we are given two mutually exclusive events. And we have to determine the probability of A or B. Question two, we also have two mutually exclusive of events with some given information. Here we have to determine the probability of one of the events. Uh, the solutions for these questions you'll find at the end of the video. In question three, again we are given two uh, mutually exclusive events with some given information and we have to determine the probability of one of the events. In question number four, here we have a problem where you can use a uh, Venn diagram. And we have to determine whether the events of playing rugby and hockey are mutually exclusive. Again, the solutions you'll find at the end of the... I do hope you found the video on mutually exclusive events useful. And you now have a better understanding of the concept of mutually exclusive events. Thank you for watching my video. Uh, also, there are other videos on grade 10 to 12 CAPS mathematics topics. And there are also other... Uh, videos on probability concepts such as independent events, Venn diagrams, contingency tables, tree diagrams, etc. Please don't forget, once again, subscribe to my channel, Maths with Army. Thank you. Let's look at the solutions to the exercise worksheet. Here's a solution to question number one. Here's the solution to question number two. Solution to question number three. Here's the solution to question number four. I do hope you found the video on mutually exclusive events useful. And you now have a better understanding of the concept of mutually exclusive events. Thank you for watching my video. Uh, also, there are other videos on grade 10 to 12 CAPS mathematics topics. And there are also other uh, videos on probability concepts, such as independent events, Venn diagrams, 
contingency tables, tree diagrams, etc. Please don't forget, once again, subscribe to my channel, Maths with Armin. Thank you.